Hi everyone, welcome to New Life. My name is Lauren Avila Pack and I am the Family Ministry Assistant here at New Life. We are so glad that you decided to join us today. Please take a minute, check out our website down below. There's lots of fun stuff happening here all the time and we want you to connect and engage with others here. But for now, we're gonna start our service, so please join us in worship.
Thank you, Pastor Dave. It is good to have you home. Glad you're here and safe, and we were praying for you as well. What an awesome uh, ministry that uh, him and Gina get to be a part of and uh, encouraging pastors around the world. That is super cool, super, super cool. Well, we are in our Wise Up Summer Series. Have you been enjoying it so far? Anybody dealing with anger since uh, John talked about that? <laughs> How about Pastor Brian and the fear of God? What a great message last week. Um, we're going to be continuing on in that series this morning. Uh, we've been standing together, many of these um, uh, throughout this series, and reading Proverbs chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 2. And so would you stand with me? We're going to have it on the screen. We'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. And we'd just like to read this out loud together, the power of the, the Word of God. God in our lives as we speak this together. Let's read Proverbs 1, verse 2. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them do what is right, just, and fair. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple knowledge and discernment to the young. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray that you'll open up our hearts to receive your wisdom this morning and that we would have the courage to apply it to our lives. Change us today. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, Has your mouth ever gotten you into trouble? If you need prayer, just come right down to the... No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Oh, words get us into trouble, uh, don't they? We've all been there, going along, minding our own business, right? The day could be going great, it could be going poorly, whatever, it doesn't matter. But there comes a point in the day where we open our mouths and something comes out that we desperately wish we could grab a hold of and suck right back in, right? Am I alone in that? Is anybody else there? It happens, right? It happens to the best of us. It happens to some more than others. Uh, But it happens. It happens when we're trying to be funny. It happens when we're provoked. We're lost for words. Words just slip out. For me, um, one of the worst things that happens in my life is I get relaxed and I get comfortable and conversation is flowing. And, you know, there's just some things that happen in my mind that should never come out into the light of day. Am I alone? (laughs) Right? I have some weird thoughts. I have some crazy ideas. And sometimes I share those things and then go, oh, probably, I probably should have kept that to myself. Right? And then I go home. We'll get together with friends or family and we'll have great conversation and good time. And then uh, on the way home, I just rehearse everything that I said. Miserable because, man, why did I share that story, right? Uh, I'll lay awake at night. Anybody else do this? You lay awake at night, stare at the ceiling going, why did I say that? That was dumb. Maybe they, maybe, they, maybe they didn't hear what I said, right? Shannon's laying there right with me saying the same thing. Why did he say that, right? She's it's always... <laughs> Today, after the service, she's going to be, honey, why did you share that story? Why, why did you say that, right? Why do we allow those things to happen and lay awake and it just consumes us, right? Even if we had a great time. For some of us, our mouths can get us into all sorts of trouble. The good news is, is that God has something to say about this. As we look throughout scripture, we find all kinds of wisdom. Things like this that uh, Solomon writes in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. He says this, watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you'll stay out of trouble. Piece of cake, right? Sounds easy. Another translation reads this, watch your words and hold your tongue. You'll save yourself a lot of grief. Proverbs 18, 21, Solomon writes this, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who live to talk will reap its consequences. Put another way in the message translation, it says words kill Words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. We don't have to look very hard or search uh, very far to find someone spouting out verbal abuses, right? Uh, Just turn the news on, right? If you're on social media, you don't have to look very far to see it there. Uh, If you drive on Highway 99 to church, 
right? You'll see it play out there. Some of you were in the middle of it, right? You're the instigators. You know who you are. You know you're the troublemaker out there on the highway, but I'm right there with you. Unfortunately, it seems that my instincts are to respond in a way that doesn't glorify God. I naturally want to say things and react and respond in ways that don't glorify him. And yet the Bible teaches us that we were created to glorify him. We were created in his image to bring glory to him. And yet at the same time, that isn't always what flows from me. Unrighteousness, unholy, ungodly words, cursing others seems to be my natural instinct. And it freely flows from our mouths at times. When we feel afraid, we feel threatened, we feel offended, inconvenienced. Something happens or someone says something that arouses fear or anger or anxiety and out comes words that are not glorifying to the Lord. And this plays out in our homes, right? It plays out in our schools. It plays out in the marketplace. And it plays out right here in church. For some, it plays out On social media, we feel protected because the person we're communicating with, right? They're not in front of us. And so we feel this liberty that we can just voice our opinions and our beliefs without any repercussion, right? Um, Shannon loves to, uh, she's gonna hate me for telling you this. She loves to just be on Facebook and she doesn't really watch what's going on in the the feed, in the the actual article. She likes to scroll through the comments and she gets a kick out of people's comments, right? And sometimes they just get really, really, really sour. And a lot of times it's coming from those of us that are inside the church, right? Solomon is warning us to keep our mouth shut and we'll avoid grief. He's telling us that our words, the words that we say, the words that we think, the words that we type have the power to kill and destroy or to bring life and to build up. Our words are either poison or fruit. We choose. In the Gospel of Luke, we read about some godly wisdom from Jesus. It gives us insight to where these words are coming from. And in Luke chapter 6, verse 20, Jesus is teaching his disciples. He's passing along some godly wisdom to them. He's talking about how the kingdom of God works. And he's teaching them about how the poor are blessed and will inherit the kingdom of God. That the the hungry will be satisfied and those that weep will laugh in due time. To be happy when people mock you and curse you for following him, right? All these great wisdom, all this great wisdom from Jesus, that we should love our enemies and that we should not judge others. And then we get to verse 43, and this is what Jesus says. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are never picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Then listen to this. Jesus says, what you say flows from what's in your heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. Jesus is telling us that there's a treasury that we have within us that we're storing up things with. And it's out of that treasury that, we speak and that we think, and that's what flows out. It spills out of our mouths. Store up godly wisdom and out will spill godly wisdom. Store up hate and anger, store up lust or pride or greed, and that is what will spill out. Listen to what James writes in James chapter four. What's causing the quarrels and the fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and you kill to get it. You're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and you wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all, your motives are all wrong. You only want what will get you pleasure. Now, James is talking to believers here. He's talking to the church, to Christians. Now, clearly there's an issue in the church that he's writing to, right? 
That's not us, right? That wouldn't be us that James would be talking to. The fights, the disagreements, the harsh words, the cursing of others, they're coming from a place that's, that's found in all of us. There's a brokenness that we have, right? And as I read that, I go, man, this isn't much different than where we are today. This isn't any different than me. James would be talking to me because there's brokenness in me and I need Jesus to come in and bring healing in that. We all crave something, right? We all want something. Maybe it's to be seen, to be heard. We long to be successful. Proverbs starts off telling us if we apply godly wisdom to our life, it's so that we can, we can live a disciplined and a successful life. We all want something. We all long for something, right? But what I find that plays out in my life is that when I drift away from Jesus, when I drift away from him being the center of all of my wants and desires, I find myself dissatisfied. And I start looking around and I start wanting other things. And Paul warns us and he's saying that when you stop seeking God and you start seeking the pleasures found in this world, what you'll find is quarrels and fighting. And when I drift away from him, I find myself becoming bitter and critical. In other words, our words will start to bring death and not life. Jesus teaches us to seek his kingdom, to seek the kingdom of God above all else and to live righteously. Living righteously is living right before him, living to glorify him that everything that I do, everything that I think, everything that I, I speak, that it would bring glory to him to live righteously, to seek his kingdom. And then it says, he teaches us that he will give us everything that we need. Psalms 23, the psalmist captures the heart of what God is inviting us into when he declares, uh, when he declares, uh, you, O Lord, you're my shepherd, I shall not want, right? You, Lord, are the one that I'm following. You're the one that I'm seeking after. And when I'm seeking after you, I have all that I want. You give to me those desires. You change what's happening in there. Not all that, that I think that I want, not all that I desire, but all that you need me to have. I don't crave and I don't want anymore when I seek him first. But it all flows, it all flows from our heart. When we get to this place where we're following Jesus and looking to him, we recognize, and from this posture of living uh, to please God, our words become seasoned with salt and they become life-giving to those around us. Listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Godly wisdom teaches us to protect our hearts, to watch over and safeguard that inner part of who we are, allowing in things that are life-giving and uplifting while keeping out the destructive and the damaging things. What we allow to consume our attention, what we find ourselves craving, what we find ourselves wanting has a profound impact on the course of our lives. Do we want and do we desire him above everything else? And if we were to listen to godly wisdom and apply it in our lives, how would that change the way we think and the way we talk? If you're following along in your note sheet, write this down for the first one. Godly wisdom changes how I talk to myself. Godly wisdom changes how I talk to myself. Now, I struggle with this more than anything else in my life. Probably why uh, this comes up when uh, we were gonna do wise, uh, wise Up, this is what came uh, to my heart to talk on because this is one of the things that, that I struggle with the most is the conversation that happens between my ears. And if you were here last year, I, I, I spoke a message on being a recovering pessimist, right? That's who I am. I, I see the glass is half empty. I do, right? Now I've come to learn that that's a part of who God has created me to be, 
right? He, he created me. He, he put that in me. And I have an innate ability to uh, destroy the best of plans, right? But, but I can see the pitfalls, right? I have, I have an ability to see things that can go wrong and it can be used for good, right? It's not a bad thing necessarily. It, it can be really a useful tool to have someone who can see that, right? But what happens is, is too often I allow that to spiral and I see all of the things that can go wrong. I see all the things that, that aren't right in something and I, I allow that to spiral into worry and into fear. And it takes my eyes off of Jesus and I put my eyes on the problem or I put my eyes on all the potential of things that can go wrong. I spiral out of control. And I'm thinking about all of the problems that I think will happen even though I understand that most of the time what I think will go wrong never does. Philippians 4, 6, Paul and Timothy are instructing us to not worry about anything. And they say, instead, pray about everything. Worry about nothing, pray about everything. And then they go on to say this in verse eight of chapter four, fix your thoughts on what is true Fix your thoughts on what is honorable. Fix your thoughts on what is right, pure, lovely, admirable. They say, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. What consumes your thoughts? What has captured your attention? What is it that you are craving and longing for? For some of us, uh, you might relate to the pessimism that I find in my life. Others, you might struggle with self-worth, maybe because of words someone said to you, or maybe you struggle with failure or regret of past decisions. Maybe you think that God would never forgive you. Many in this room st uh, struggle with impure thoughts. We mindlessly scroll news articles and news feeds and we fill our minds with pictures and words that are not glorifying to the Lord at all. For some of us, there's an internal dialogue that says that we're not good enough, that we're not good as so-and-so. Pastor Dave speaks better than I do. And we look in the mirror and we say things like, my ears aren't straight or my nose is too big, right? But here's the thing, we are created, you were created by a loving God who created you in his image, and he is really, really pleased with what he's created. And yet we stand in the mirror and we look back and we often put down that which God has created. Because when we fill our, the treasury of our heart with something other than godly wisdom, it's out of that treasury flows the thoughts that we think about ourselves but godly wisdom comes up against those lies. Godly wisdom, when it's poured into our hearts, challenges those lies and challenges those things that we get ourselves stu that get stuck in our heads. And when we start applying God's word to our life, whether it's an in internal dialogue that's rooted in insecurities, whether it was somebody else that said something to you, godly wisdom can help change the way we talk to ourselves. Psalms 19, 14, the psalmist declares, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. What do you allow to consume your thoughts? What do you allow your mind to meditate on? Is it pleasing and honoring to God? Does it fit the description of what Paul and Timothy would say? Fix your thoughts on in Philippians 4, 8. Listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse one and two. It says, he says this, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Do not copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know what God's will is for you, which is good 
and pleasing and perfect. I love that, that God's will for you and I is good and pleasing and perfect. And he invites us into this relationship with him that changes the way we think. When we fall in love with Jesus, when we just don't come to church and have a casual acquaintance with him, but when, when you and I fall in love with Jesus and every day we fall in love with him each day, he comes in and transforms us, makes us a new person. And he does that by changing the way we think. He renews our mind. We learn to speak words of the one who created us, words that bring life and not death. When we meditate on God's word, when we allow that to fill our hearts, we'll find, godly, we'll find the godly wisdom that changes the way we talk to ourselves. Write this down for number two. Godly wisdom changes the way I talk to others. <clears throat> Now, I shared with you that my mouth is, uh, I shared with you uh, my pessimism. I asked you if your mouth has ever gotten in any trouble. And <clears throat> so this is where my confession comes in. <clears throat> uh, several years ago, we, we thought this was a birthday party that we were having for one of our kids, but it wasn't. It, it, uh, a Facebook memory came up uh, just this week. And Shannon was like, hey, babe, this is, there wasn't a birthday party. Anyway, long story short. So uh, we've had this great day about six, seven years ago. Kyle was going to have some friends over. It was the end of the school year. And uh, Saturday morning, uh, me and Shannon, you guys are going to think we're a little bit nuts. So that's okay. Uh, what we love doing, one of the things that we love doing um, among many things, but our favorite is just cleaning up our house. Anybody else like cleaning your house? Um, we love after the end of a long, busy day, this to take the Saturday morning and just get our house back in order, get ready for the upcoming week. And we have our routine and Shannon would start in the inside and I'd start cleaning up the outside and we'd come together and share duties and we're doing the laundry and making a grocery list. And I love going to the grocery store with my wife and we wander the grocery store and, you know, cause I can't go alone cause that would be a hot mess, but we go together and we get the groceries and we're having, we're having a fantastic day. And I'm not kidding. This is really like, this is a dream day for me and Shannon. We're in marital bliss, okay? It's fantastic. We're laughing. We're having a great time. We're running our errands. We're doing our stuff. Our house is in order. We swing by Little Caesar's Pizza. We pick up a stack of pizzas, get them into the back of the car. We're on our way home for our son to have his friends over. We're gonna have a great day. And I say, babe, you know what I love? Just like that, to pause. Shannon's heart just welled up with love and babe, what do you love? And I said pizza. <laughs> and if you could have seen her face in that moment, <laughs> you would be like, dude, you're sleeping in the doghouse tonight, right? I love my wife and I tell her all the time, but I love pizza too and even Little Caesars, and it was in the back of the car and it smelled so good and I just wanted some pizza, right? Words get us into all kinds of trouble. Now, me and Shannon laugh about that. We got a really good kick out of it. She still makes fun of me to this day and I love it. Um, but uh, fortunately for me, it, it worked out, but uh, our words can get us into some hot water. Now, going back to what Jesus said in Luke chapter six, verse 45, that what you say flows from what's in your heart. Right? It's the saying, garbage in, garbage out. What you allow to consume your thoughts, what you allow to consume your time, the good and the bad, they take up residence in our heart. And the Bible teaches us that it's out of the heart that determines, it's the heart that determines the course of our life. And that treasury of what's filling up inside of us is what's gonna spill out of our mouths. What we allow to consume us, like for me in that moment, the pizza just overwhelmingly taking over my life, right? That's what spilled out of my mouth. And what you meditate on, what you allow to consume your time and your thoughts, that's what you're gonna speak. It'll either bring life or it'll bring death. It's your choice. It's funny how uh, God works. The moment that uh, uh, Proverbs 21, 23 came to mind, we were talking about the Wise Up series. I swear that within, within three days, there were so many more bad drivers on Highway 99. 
And I was probably driving to church, but likely I was driving to the office here, right? And I'm coming up, you know, and somebody came zooming past me, nearly hit me, um, nearly caused another accident. And as they were flying by, I was like, hey, buddy, you should slow down, right? Those were my exact words. (laughs) I'm not alone. Come on, right? And in that moment, I'm dreaming about them being pulled over by a cop, right? Anybody, don't judge me, you're there. You're doing the same thing, maybe even worse, right? But then I thought about this message and what God wants to be pouring out of my heart. And it began to change a lot of the things and the perspectives of what I was looking at from that moment on. And that in those moments, it happened this morning on my way. It's, it's almost every day on 99, right? A car sped past me, but the, the opportunity to thank God that I didn't get in an accident, that doesn't instinctively come to mind. But what if it did? What if in those moments we began to fill our hearts with godly wisdom so that when something like that happens or we're standing in line at the grocery store and it's not going as fast as we want, right? What if we took moments like that to say, God, thank you for my family. Thank you that we're safe. What if we're praying for that crazy driver driving down the road saying, God, protect them and protect the people around them. Words that come out of our mouth, they have the ability to bring life or to bring death. When we recognize our need for Jesus, we turn to him. And when we seek to fill our hearts with godly wisdom, our hearts are changed. When we grow into a relationship with Jesus, he, he begins to fill our hearts. His love begins to well up inside of us and that's what begins to pour out. It changes how we think about ourselves, how we process in our minds and it changes the words that we speak to others. Write this down for number three. Godly wisdom leads me to talk to God. Now I know we repeat this over and over and over again in church, right? And it's because it's so important, we need to learn to pray. And then when you have learned to pray, pray some more. The Bible tells us that we should pray without ceasing. Now, prayer becomes this thing that we get fearful of and like, I don't know how to talk to God, but it's a conversation. It's talking with him. I didn't get to know Shannon by sitting on the couch next to her, scrolling on my phone with my mouth shut. I got to know my wife and I know her intimately because we've taken the time to talk. We've taken the time to to share life, to listen to each other, share each other's stories, the give and take of ideas right? Conversation, dreams, hopes, disappointments, regrets, the sharing of our life with one another. That's prayer. When we're talking to God, it's that conversation. And God knows every single detail about my life. He knows every thought, He knows uh, every action. He knows everything about me. He knows everything about you. And yet we serve a God who invites us to open up and share our life with him. It's not just about getting to know him and knowing him. It's about allowing ourselves to be known and fully known, unashamed, unhidden, fully exposed to the God of the universe who wants to have a relationship with you. And he just wants to have a conversation. In Genesis chapter three, we have this this scenario play out, right? Where Adam and Eve, they disobey God. They eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God comes looking for them and he says, hey, where are you guys? God didn't, God wasn't in the dark about where they were. He knew exactly where they were but he was inviting them out like we would our children if they, when they made a mistake and we knew they had made a mistake and they were miserable on the inside, we knew what they had done, but we don't always confront them, right? There was something magical about when our kids came to the place where they were able to say, dad, I blew it. 
how amazing ha- those moments when you can go, yeah, no. Now let's take the steps to repair it. God already knows, but he's looking for us to open up our hearts, to share our dreams, our hopes, our failures, our disappointments, to be honest and real and authentic with him. You haven't hidden anything from him. He already knows. Have the difficult conversation. Have the, the, the time, take the time to talk. He desires to allow us. He desires that we allow him to know us. He desires for us to open up, to be real, vulnerable, and honest with him. What would it look like if we truly sought him with all of our heart? If we didn't just have knowledge about God, but that we began to actually know him and allow ourselves to be known by him. If we stopped relying on our understanding and we began to acknowledge him in all of our ways. How would that affect your relationship with him? How would that in turn affect the words that you speak to yourself or the words that you allow to come out of your mouth to other? What if instead of cursing, we began to pray and speak life? Listen to what James writes in James chapter three, verse two. He says this, indeed, we all make mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by, a, by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all of the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. There's a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Then in verse 13, he says, if you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. So how do we walk in godly wisdom? The first thing we've got to do is we've got to start guarding our hearts. And what does that look like? It looks like getting to know him, but it looks like meditating on things. Maybe it it looks like setting your phone down. Yeah. 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 That was perfect timing. I will get you your 20 bucks after service. Um, right? Maybe it looks like turning the TV off. The idea of sitting in silence. We did a video uh, uh, shoot yesterday. It was four hours of video shooting and they made us put our phones away. Yeah, there was a real estate agent that was shooting the film with us and he was like, ah, he was losing his mind, right? It was fun to watch. Um, (laughs) Sorry, Josh. Um, (laughs) Maybe it looks like evaluating the movies and the TV shows that you allow uh, into your heart, into your mind. Maybe it looks like being mindful of the music that you allow to influence your perspectives. Now, I'm not saying that these things are bad. I'm not saying that you should get these things out of, that they have to be gone. I'm just saying, what if we took a step back and we evaluated what we allow to consume our attention, that we allow to influence the cravings and the wants of our hearts, And what if we started to fill that with godly wisdom? What would that look like in your life? It's out of the treasury of what's stored up in your heart. That's what spills out of your mouth. How could that change the way you think, what you type, the way you speak? What if the words you and I thought about were life-giving and worthy of praise? What if we responded from a treasury of godly wisdom? The challenge this week is to stop 
and be mindful of what you're meditating on so that your words will be life-giving for yourself and for those around you. Would you stand with me? <clears throat> Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your word. We're so grateful for your wisdom. And God, I know that in and of myself, I have no ability to make things right and to fix things. I'm so grateful that um, you, uh, you spanned that gap and you, you did what only you can do to give me, to redeem me and bring me to a place that, Lord, you, you uh, uh, invite me into a relationship with you that changes me and it makes me a new person and then you change the way I think. God, I pray that you will be with us this week, that we would be people that would be filled with godly wisdom, that it would be a treasury that wells up within us and that our words and our thoughts would be life-giving to ourselves and to those around us. We pray all of these things in your name. Amen. Amen. So if you are new... Don't forget, stop at the starting point. We would love to meet you. We got a gift for you. Everybody else, man, uh, stay cool out there, right? It's gonna be hot. Happy 4th of July. We'll see you next week.